Hey, so today we're looking at Weezer's Buddy Holly. We're gonna find the power chords for that song and review all the notes on the fret, especially for the low E string and on the A string, being able to follow the music alphabet to find those chords. First, let's take a listen to the song and see if we can kind of start getting familiar with the movement, just geometrically or physically, up and down the neck. So as I zoom in, take a look at this. So you saw I jumped between playing up on the bottom of the fifth fret and then on the open position. There's multiple ways to do this, especially because I played first two types of A chords. I played this A power chord on the open position, but I also played it here in the fifth fret. So being able to remember that there are multiple places to play the same chords will help us out. And it might even help out to find easier ways to play some of the parts, especially the chorus. The chorus goes A, D, E. A, D, E. But I can also find that with power chords, I can go A, D, E. A, D, E. And if you remember, this is called our L shape. Because with our index finger, we kind of trace an L. We go from the E string to the A string, down, and then across. So we could follow that L shape for the chorus. So when we're doing, ooh, -ee -ooh I look just like Buddy Holly. I could do that there, or I could play it here in the open position. Ooh, -ee -ooh and a merry time and morn. Both of those have different sounds. They have a different tonality. With one, you get just the power chord, which takes the feeling from its name. It sounds very powerful. It sounds uh, solid. It sounds like it has good footing. As opposed to the open chords, which tend to be a little bit different. We have to be very careful about the strings that we're playing and not to play too many of the open strings. Because if I play the full A chord with distortion, it sounds it it sounds it starts to get muddy. When I play it here, it stays, I don't want to say clean because it has distortion on it, but it stays the, the clarity of the distortion stays in the chord. So we can look at those and maybe judge for yourself. What is the best spot for you to play? Do you want to play the power chords? The issue there is you would be playing power chords throughout the whole song. Or do you want to play the open chords? And the problem there is if you're doing playing it with distortion, it might end up sounding muddy. But we'll take a look at both and be able to play both by the end of the, of the lesson. Let's dive in and let's actually go back and review our music alphabet and looking at it up and down the guitar. So I'm here, this is a familiar page to you. We've already done the low E string. The low E string goes E and then up the alphabet. F, G, A, B, C, D, E. We jump up an octave, that's what the movement that we call Whenever we go from E to E, if I play this on the piano, since it's here accessible, I've made it to another E note. Whenever I jump up those next eight notes, that's where we get the word octave from. 
So whenever we did this on the A string, we've done this already. We followed the same pattern. We looked at the musical alphabet and we looked at where our whole steps and half steps are. Our half steps are the spots where we move fret to fret. So in here, you, you probably spotted B and C very, very quickly. That's a half step. You might or might not have spotted B and F. Right? That's also a half step. Though we're going from an open string to the first fret, that's still, it, imagine it this way, it's zero to one. So there's no number between zero and one unless you look at decimals, which in music we don't have to look at decimals, thankfully. So whenever we go and do the A string, follow the same pattern and get really familiar with where your half steps occur. If we go from A, the open string, to the next note, which is B, we can also look here on the E string. That was two frets away. So I'm going to the second fret, B. Now I've made it to B and I'm looking for C. That's a half step. That's just one fret away. I can follow the whole pattern up. Two frets to D, two frets to E, D, E. Now I'm, I, I'm out of notes at the end. I can also look at the octave because when I go lower, here's my next note, F. Just a half step and there is my one fret distance. When I go after that, F, I find G, that's two frets. I find the octave is again here on the 12th fret, which is gonna be very interesting once we complete this whole row. That's gonna be the same letter as your open string because the 12th fret is always an octave from your open string. It'll always be the same letter name. So here we have both the E string and the A string. That means we can find all those chords. We could test this out and very easily start finding the notes and that's probably where we should start. Just finding the single notes for all of this. Here we can look at both. So if I look at, let's say the first five frets on the low E, the open string is E, look for F, first fret, I look for G, third fret, A, fifth fret, let me zoom in just a little bit, you can see even clearer, maybe like this. So whenever I'm looking now at the A string, I'm plucking the A string, and I look for the next string, so I went from the open string to the second fret for B, then third fret for C, and then the fifth fret for D. I could follow this pattern all the way up the string. And this is great practice, especially if you want to become familiar with the music alphabet and how it relates to the fretboard. This is how most professional guitarists or any guitarist learn the fretboard. They learn where their whole steps and half steps happen and where to play chords or where to play notes, usually starting on these two strings. So if I do that for the whole A string, A, B on second fret, C on third, D on five, E on seven, F on eight, G on 10, A on 12, there's my octave. So I can now follow that diagram that we drew and be able to find all my notes until that becomes ingrained in my memory. And no matter what string, I can do that again. So I can jump up to the D and without writing it in, I could just say, okay, D, when I go up to the next string, that's a whole step, that's two frets away. So I can replicate this, D, two frets to E, would land me on the second fret. And F is a half step, so I just go up one fret to the third, right? I can follow the whole thing up, so I'm an F, G, A, B, and here's my half step, B to C, C, and then a whole step to D, okay? If you remember that mnemonic phrase that I taught you, Big cats eat first. That's exactly what we have here on the screen. 
big cats, when I go from B to C, on the next string, eat first, E to F. So it's wonderful how this works out on the seventh fret of the low E string, B, C, E, F. Those spots are right on top of each other. Anywhere where you have a B and a C, almost anywhere, you'll have that same step on the next string. So whenever I go to B and C on the A string, second fret to third fret, B to C, the next string up on D, I'm gonna find E and F. And sure enough, whenever we draw those in, we will land E and F on second and third frets. So just extra little fun tip, look for those half steps, B, C, E, F, big cats eat first. But let's go back to our song. Our song, we were looking at the chords. So here up on the screen, I have the verse, and we get into some trouble because if we're not too comfortable with the chord diagrams that most songs give us, then we don't, if we don't really understand this, then we won't be able to follow this very clearly. Unless we first look at the music alphabet. And we remember that there are spots that we didn't have notes written in. We have spots that were left out. Here again on the first five frets, we have E, F, G, A. We can even go up to B. But we don't have the second fret of the low E. We don't have the fourth fret of the low E. And so that is where sharps and flats occur. Let's stick with sharps right now. So sharps are whenever we go one fret or one half step higher than our note. If we want to find an F sharp, we just go to the very next fret, F sharp. If we want to find a G sharp, again, very next fret. Oh, already have F. G, G sharp. Same thing for A. If you want to find A sharp, then we just go one fret up, A sharp. And you can do that for any string, any note. If you want to find C sharp, that's just one fret higher than C. So we're now on the fourth fret of the A string. Like that, you can find any chord, but more importantly, with the exception of the A, we don't need the A right now, F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp are chords that we're going to use in Buddy Holly. See them right there, F sharp, G sharp, and then C sharp at the end. The chorus just needs F sharp, G sharp, and A. Let's try to map this out all with our brain, all with our, with our knowledge. If we know the low E string, we already know E, E, F, G, and A. So now let's try to just play every fret and name it going up to the A string, or sorry, to the A fret on the fifth fret. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So I landed on the fifth fret again on A. If I want to play just F sharp, G sharp, and A, then I only target the frets that have that name. F sharp was the second fret of the E, G sharp was the fourth, and A gets us up to the fifth fret. Again, fifth fret. With the pattern, we don't need to even know the chord just yet. We can just go and we've got the, f the verses for Buddy Holly, right? Think of it as whenever we're doing that rhythm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, repeat. So I'm grouping this into counts of eight. On A, I did two counts of eight. So once I land there, I stay there for the whole 16 counts. But for F sharp and G sharp, the first count of eight, I'm on F sharp the whole time. The second set, the last two counts are on G sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. And I stay here on A. Whenever we do the verse, we repeat that. And that's it. That's all the verse is. If we want to add the power chords, then remember our power chord shape. Once we find the note name, meaning the fret where we find an F sharp if we're looking for an F sharp power chord, then fret where we're looking for a G sharp if we want to play a G sharp power chord, and then the fret where we want to play an A if we're playing the A power chord. Once we have that note, we go up two frets in one string. So I played F sharp on the second fret of the E, I play now the fourth fret of the A to complete that. If that right there is a little bit tough, you can always switch to your pinky. And I even think that uh, Weezer plays it like this. The guitarist lead singer plays it almost exactly like this. And we play that twice. And that would be all I would need to do to get this song, the verses, down. All I need is two strings, my index finger is on one of them, my pinky is on the other one, and my hand slides up, keeping that shape. My picking hand then just needs to play that. It just needs to play those two strings. For an extra bonus, Let's take a look at this. That you probably recognize off the bat. We're on the high E string, on the ninth fret, and we're gonna do a hammer on and a pull off. So all we need to do is pick once, just pick once, and then with your middle finger, start tapping on the next fret up, which is the 10th fret. And you do that one, two, one, two, and let go. One, two, let go. Work up as much as you need to and take away as much as you need to. If you can only play the chords, if all you can do is just strum once. Da -na 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 that's acceptable too. That way you can fit this in. Three, four, one, two, three. Three, four, one, two. Or if you want to do just that note, just the E string, that's acceptable too. Remember that all this is for you to be able to gain confidence with how you're playing. So if it doesn't sound like the song, first thing we know is that doesn't mean that it'll, it'll stay like that forever. Eventually, we'll get it to sound like the song. But to get to that point, we wanna take small steps. We wanna take uh, bite-sized steps towards our success, towards our progress. So once you have all that, if you can't do the full chord, go down to one note, keep the rhythm. If you can't keep the rhythm, try to do the chord. So you can practice that small and very, very fun lick that they play. Whenever we keep going, let's look at the last part, the pre-chorus and the chorus. Since we already know, and we already can play our power chords, we can find D, C sharp, and guess what? We already know F sharp. D, we have it already written out. It's on the A string. And so is C sharp. So all I need to know is what fret is that on? That is on A, fifth fret. So right here. And then C sharp, and then F sharp. And we follow a similar idea. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. That one's a little bit tougher. It's got a different rhythm. On the D, fifth fret, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C sharp. One, two, three, four. On F sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. We could do the full power chord by adding our pinky or ring finger. Two frets up, one string down. This next part, we introduce one new chord. So if you feel comfortable with the power chord for D, you might also remember that we can add one more fret, one more string on the same fret as the, as the ring finger is. So we can go ring finger and pinky here on the seventh fret, both of them, to complete that D chord. So I'm fifth fret of the A, seventh fret of the D, seventh fret of the G. This last line of the pre-chorus, we do this for eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it says D minor to make this. You already know this shape. To turn this into a D minor, all you have to do is press down the sixth fret of the B string. So we go from five, seven, seven, and add the sixth fret on the B string. So that whole part halfway through, so we do eight counts of D power chord and eight counts of D minor chord. And then we're into the chorus. So the easy way to play this, the easy way to play this part is just to do your Open, open chords. Ooh, -ee -ooh I look just like Buddy Holly. Again, that adds a little bit of muddiness if we have distortion on. But let's see how this would sound. If you remember your power chords down here. And you can play them in that way. Let's try this for the whole chorus. We'd go Ooh, wee, you, I look D, E, A, D, E. We're back to F sharp. This section is fast. We go D, E, A, just like that. D, E, A. The next line, the last line, fourth line of the chorus is that same speed. A, D, E. We wait a little bit and we do A. I don't care about that. You could play it that way. That's one way to play it. And this is how the whole thing would look like. Ooh, -ee -ooh I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and I'm Mary Tyler Moore. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. It's a lot of switching, but you've got just one finger that basically moves between E, D, and A. The other option is then to find the power chords up on the fifth fret. If we switch over here, check this out. We know our L shape. When I highlight these, see it's an upside down L, but there it is. A, D, E, and we'll play F sharp back here on the second fret of the low E. So we've got A, D, and E. Take a closer look at this L shape. I'm here on the fifth fret of the A, sorry, fifth fret of the low E. Then to switch to my D chord, I just slide all fingers down by one string. A, D. I just take all my fingers and push them down one string. And I have the next chord. To go to E, we know that E is 
one whole step away, two frets away. So I'm going to take D that I played here on the fifth fret of the A and go one, two. All fingers move up two frets. Here it is again. D, one, two, E. So we have A, D, E. Let me play the whole chorus for you using these chords. Power chords. One, two, three, four. Ooh, wee, ooh, I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and a merry time or more. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. Compare them. Ooh, wee, ooh, I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and a merry time or more. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. <laughs> Two different ways of playing it. Neither of them is in a lesson and student approach. Neither of them is the right way or the wrong way. Whatever is easiest for you, that's the way that we want to do it. So as you're playing through, if you feel more comfortable with the open power chords that we learned during Back in Black. Then stick with those. You get extra practice, you will become much more a master of this chord down here. If you want an extra challenge and you feel ready for it, then you can play it here. And follow the pattern of the way that I played it. Go back and rewatch that as many times as you need. And again, if you need any extra help, if you have any questions about it, feel free to text me and I'll see you in class.